Hello everyone, Drake Adams here. Welcome back to the start of another Pokemon Sword and Shield season. We have Season 3 now available online, and we're going to be getting some battles today, trying to get back up to Masters. It's going to be an interesting season, a very changing meta, with some cool new Pokemon added. We have Incineroar, we have Blastoise, we have Venusaur. Lapras G-Max is going to be a problem. That's going to be everywhere, I'm sure. So we're going to do what we can to uh, kind of like roll with those punches and see how our teams fit with that. So we're going to go with a, a little combo that I kind of started earlier before, and that was with uh, Dragapult and Toxtricity. But Toxtricity now gets the G-Max uh, upgrade as well. So I feel like uh, though we want to be attacking with it in its standard form, having a G-Max alternative uh, with a solid G-Max attack is actually pretty cool. What happens is his uh, electric attack will uh, have the ability to either paralyze or poison poison the opponent and it'll hit both slots there so I mean obviously poison is not that big of a deal but paralysis is pretty nice that's why you see uh, the Butterfree uh, do some sort of uh, play here and there so Toxtricity is nice Dragapult's nice we have a couple more answers to deal with ground types uh, we were really struggling with ground before so we have Inteleon that can actually help pressure Rhyperior and Excadrill a lot being faster than both of them we have Jellicent, which actually is just like a nice counter to the Sand Team, and Kunkelders as well for Titar. So there are some gaps in the squad. Um, admittedly, you'll probably recognize that we have no Steel attack or attacker and no Fairy. And Steel and Fairy are definitely the two most popular or, um, moves that you want to be using a lot right now in the meta. But the meta is going to be changing, and I think that Water is going to be pretty important with Incineroar. I feel that... Um, Kind of just hitting both slots really hard and quickly is going to be also uh, like something of value. So I think our Toxtricity idea might have some more value now, um, especially now that we've kind of tried to address our sand issues. We'll see if uh, not having a fairy, if not having Togekiss is going to be our downfall, <laughs> which it might, I'm not going to lie. And we'll see if not having a Steel type in Duraludon or Durant is a problem. Obviously, those Pokemon are everywhere, so maybe not having like the main meta in your team can work in our advantage. People won't have uh, hard counters to what we have, hopefully. Uh, we'll see how this goes uh, starting off the Season 3 here. Uh, Incineroar is definitely going to be a problem, but we have a lot of special attackers. We're kind of built for that. But uh, we don't have too many physical uh, physical attackers, so if we come across some Gudras, then I think that might be a little scary. Luckily, we don't see Gudra here, but we do see a team that's wanting to set up speed, wanting to take control with uh, Dracovish. Rillaboom is going to be a problem. So Inteleon looks pretty nice here. They also have Sand here as well, so... I don't think our Dragapult Toxtricity lead is going to be strong. I think this is going to be an Inteleon Conkelder team for the most part. They they do have a Rillaboom, so that's going to be a bit scary. Hmm, yeah, they do have a Rillaboom. Rillaboom is no fun. No fun at all. So, I think the Rillaboom there is to help protect against that weakness. And Rillaboom also does carry a uh, Fake Out. So we're going to go in DD Inteleon. And DD is good for stopping Prankster, things like Fake Tears. It's also good for stopping Fake Outs. So we're going to start with that. We're, we've got to bring in Conkelder. I think Jellicent's going to be pretty strong here as well. Dealing with, uh, let's see here. So we have Fight, Water, and Jellicent. Yeah, I think that's going to be strong. Intellion's going to have to really carry the load here, and then Conkelder will, will be our strength in the back. So Our team was uh, very weak to water. Um, obviously, they have a Rillaboom to try to counter that, but maybe if we can focus down the Rillaboom and get that out of the way, then the rest of the thing should fall into place. So, yep. We do see Rillaboom. We see Dracovish. Psychic Surge is going to stop any sort of uh, fake-out plans from our opponent. 
question is, do we want to follow me? I think we might have to do a follow me. Try to keep Inteleon alive as long as possible. And we can go ahead and actually airstream the Rillaboom. Having just used Rillaboom for the online uh, tournament that just passed, uh, I happen to know that like Rillaboom is great for things like Fake Out for knockoff, but the grass typing is just so weak to so many things that um, that's like kind of where you struggle. I think we're going to try to take advantage of this with a max airstream. Being able to hit them for, for weakness and uh, getting a speed boost I think is going to be really helpful. And getting a spe speed boost is going to help us try to counter counteract this uh, probably scarfed Yep, and there you go. Yeah, we see a hard a hard hit there. It is faster than our uh, Inteleon, so we can anticipate that that uh, Dr Dracovish is scarfed. Hopefully this uh, Air Slash is going to give us uh, enough speed to be faster than it next turn. So we, we see a Wood Hammer, yep, so he is coming after us. So Ndidi does what uh, she was uh, put out there for. Ooh, the Wood Hammer. If, if, if that killed him, then that would have been perfect. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we are going to have to go after, hmm, yeah, Rillaboom is going to be faster than the Conkelder, and since the Psychic uh, Surge, the Psychic uh, Terrain is up, we aren't going to be able to Mach Punch. So we are going to have to go after the Rillaboom one more time. I think uh, going for another Max Airstream is fine. It'll get the kill, and then it'll give some speed to Conkelder. Question will be is, can we um, live the hits from the Dracovish? Dracovish is uh, Scarfed, so he's not going to be pressuring our Inteleon much. But we'll just have to see if uh, we are bulky enough to live the super-powered uh, Fishius Rend coming up. I'd imagine he's going to be going after our Conkelder here. Comes fishy as Ren and can Kelder take it and he can, which is massive. And we'll follow up with a drain punch. So drain punch does uh, some some nice heal for us. Now we're gonna have be on our last turn of uh, Dynamax. An opponent's gonna have a Dynamax of their own, so this is gonna be a little scary. I think we're gonna. We could go airstream into Dracovish because we we know that Dracovish can't protect. And we see the T tar though, but the oh, uh, actually no. Okay, so I think going the water water attack is very uh, tempting into the T tar, but we're just gonna go ahead and drain punch the T tar slot. We're gonna go ahead and max airstream again the Dracovish, which uh, should knock out the Dracovish. I don't know if this is gonna give our Conkelder enough speed. But to be honest, uh, our opponent's kind of uh, in a like like a sticky spot. The Titar doesn't want to take hits from Inteleon or the Conkelder. So I guess the main question is going to be, will this uh, Airstream... Actually, it's going to be a plus two uh, for our Conkelder. Titar does do a max guard, which is actually fine. It means that we're able to get an Airstream in for free. Kelder is going to be uh, nice and fast now. He's going to be a plus two. So he should be able to pressure Tyranitar with a Drain Punch next turn. Obviously, your opponent could have uh, Excadrill in the back, and this could be like a Sand Rush strategy, which I'd be uh, very surprised if he doesn't have that in the back. But if we're able to land a, a Hydro Pump, onto the extra drill, then I think we're going to be in a decent situation. Oh, no, they have the Rotom Heat. This is uh, basically the same situation. Actually, this might be a little better for us. Uh, this should ensure that uh, he isn't able to uh, use the Sand Rush speed on us, but I, I know Ally Switch is kind of scary. But still, we're going to go ahead, Drain Punch the T-Tar, and Hydro Pump the Rotom Heat. And hope that the Hydro Pump can, can land. If Hydro Pump lands here, I think we're going to be in a great position. Here comes Hydro Pump, and it does land. So this is awesome. We'll see how much this does with the Life Orb. And takes him down. Hyd Hydro Pump doing the work. 
And plus two Conkelder. Does that does that make you fast enough, sir? And it does. Titar takes that big hit. We've probably procced a weakness policy. But we got a huge heal off though. And oh, okay, no uh, weakness policy there. So that's actually very helpful as we see until Young go down. So I think we're gonna be good for our uh, first match here. All right. And we'll bring up Jellicent. So it wasn't the uh, the main start that we wanted to do with the Dragapult Toxtricity lead, but uh, we saw that there was a Sand Team and we made our our changes, our adaptations to it. And I'm hoping this is uh, going to give our team a little bit more legs here. Oh, what is this? Oh, Quick Claw. Oh, uh, oh, Psychic Train's still up. Oh, that's right. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, this could spell trouble. I think we should tank this because uh, we are a fighting type. But yeah, that was a little scary if we didn't have a water move there. Um, I forgot about our own terrain. So yeah, something that we got to make sure. Once the sand comes up, then it's visually I start to miss uh, some of the uh, terrain effects. So ooh, we got through that mistake. But yeah, I think uh, having this uh, pivot to deal with the sand team might make this toxicity uh, squad a little bit stronger because before we were uh, just constantly coming up across the thing about toxicity you know we, we have the boom burst attack which is nice and it doesn't hit ghost types which is why we're using dragapult as our uh, lead with it problem with toxicity is that he's a bit slower so uh, you know we use dragapult to give us a speed boost and then toxicity can go in and hit hard that's at least the strategy Okay, and here we are seeing some of the new Pokemon. We see Primarina and Incineroar. So this is going to be, be very interesting. We see Dusclops. I'm not sure if this Dusclops is here to set Trick Room or if it's just there to provide support. I feel like it's just there for support. But we're going to go ahead and do our standard lead, the lead that I was discussing here. Although, yeah, we'll have Inteleon in the back. And do we, do we want to do Ndidi just for some redirect? I feel like that could be good. Conkelder, I'm not sure how much Conkelder does here with the Togekiss. Hmm. And I think Ndidi could be helpful for stopping the mock punches on our opponent's end. So there we go. So yeah, we're going to get our uh, kind of standard lead here, the uh, Dragapult Toxicity. Now they have Dusclops, who's a ghost type on their end, so if we go Boom Burst, we're not going to be able to hit that. So um, it's a, it, you have to take a look at what your opponent brings out, which is and then choose if you're going to go the Boom Burst strategy, which hits really hard and will not hit Dragapult, or if you want to go Overdrive, which uh, will hit more types, but um, you're not worried about it hitting your own side. Obviously, Electric is not going to hit the ground types, so we have a couple things to worry about there. And so yeah, this is going to be an interesting uh, team here. So, now usually with Dusclops, you can expect uh, Trick Room. So we are going to go ahead and Max Phantom that slot. If he does uh, an ally switch, then that's actually going to be fine for us. Because it means that he's not clicking Trick Room. So. Ally Switch is not something you really want to try to predict too often unless uh, the opponent has just already put up a, like a Dynamax Pokemon and then Dusclops doesn't have that much to do. Uh, making this play uh, is basically covering both of our bases. Obviously the main thing that we, we don't want to see happen is Trick Room go up. Um, so we see Fake Out, which uh, means that uh, I guess Trick Room can still come out. I don't think this is going to get a kill on the Dusclops, so that's a little unfortunate. So if we had, if we had seen this start before, uh, what what we we could have done, yeah, and here comes the Trick Room. We uh, could have actually um, let in Didi, and then just given Dragapult a uh, helping hand. We're not going to have that this time. But I think what we can do is go ahead and lower... Oh no, that's not going to work. 
Then we're going to go ahead and hit the Dragapult in case there is an ally switch, and then we're going to Overdrive. Since we are a choice specs, we are lock locked into that. One thing I am afraid of is Dragapult being offensive and uh, clicking Sucker Punch. Well, no, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not for our Dragapult. Yeah, like I'm worried about our Dragapult getting hit with Sucker Punch from their Grim Snarl. But uh, we'll see what happens. So we see Primarina come out. So that's cool. We're starting to see some, some new, new Pokemon. And here comes a Light Screen. I feel like screens are going to be a, a big part of this meta. Here comes Overdrive. And, uh, okay. Eject button on the Grim Snarl. I'm surprised that our Toxtricity attacked before our Dragapult. Not sure what happened there. Unless that's something, some some sort of effect of Primarina, perhaps. And here comes Max Phantasm. I believe that's going to go into the Dusclops slot, though. So Dusclops is down, which is which is great. Defense fell for Pre uh, Primarina, which is not going to be too relevant. Uh, but the good thing for us is Primarina is a Water type, so she's not going to want to take this Overdrive hit. And we have one more turn of Dynamax. So they're going to have Trick Room and Dynamax available for them. Okay, so we are likely to see another fake out here. I don't expect to see any sort of switches happening. So I think we just go after the Primarina. And yeah, we don't want anyone in the back to, to take a fake out. So we'll just go ahead and click Overdrive. Force our opponent to make a different play here. But I anticipate fake out coming out again. So yeah. So not a bad move. Okay, Parish Song. Interesting. So Parish Song comes out. Primarina is going to go down. Luckily, our Dynamax is, is ending. So I don't really feel any like real pressure to keep our Pokemon in. Now, uh, typically with Parish Song, the opponent's going to have Pokemon with abilities that trap us in, so we can't retreat. I don't believe I saw anything like that from the preview, though. Okay, here. So we know that uh, Con Conkelder can't uh, hit our Dragapult with his punches, so Mach Punch is, is, is okay here. I think what we might do is uh, switch out our Toxtricity for Indeedee. Question, how scared are we of... Uh... Actually, let's go ahead and click Fly. Get out of the way there. And we're going to switch into Indeedee. Don't feel like the, the Grim Snarl is putting too much pressure on us, actually. And bringing in Ndidi goes, goes ahead and protects us against any uh, potential mock punches here. Oh. And he actually goes and protects, which is actually good for us as well. And uh, this protects us from psychic uh, punches, or sucker punches as well. So Ndidi switching was huge for us right there. Oh, okay, and our opponent reveals Flame Orb, so that's a little scary. It means, though, that it's uh, not going to be able to uh, take uh, the Psychic hit at all. So let's go ahead and just double up on the Conkelder here. He already protected, so he's not likely to try for another Protect. And we see a Dynamax coming. If this is Conkelder, then I think like we're going to be feeling pretty good. And it is. I mean... They kind of had to do that, right? Grimmsnarl doesn't seem to be putting up too much of an offensive pressure. But the problem is that we know that there's a Flame Orb on the Conkelders, so... We have Psychic Terrain boosted. Oh, and he is faster than our Ndidi. Hmm. I think... Luckily, we have Focus Ash. I feel like there's some weird, uh speed things going on right now with the game. I wonder if there's some glitches happening. Oh, no, wait. Never mind. Trick Room's up. <laughs> That's the glitch. 
Trick Room. Trick Room is there, is, is a glitch <laughs> of all time. Duh. I completely forgot that our opponent had Dust Clops earlier. It's like, what is going on? How are we slower and this and that? So yeah, Trick Room is still up. Um, we've, we've been dealing with turns of Trick Room, so I guess that's good. But indeed, he does go down. I guess the question would be, how many more turns of Trick Room are there? So Dragapole is down to his last turn. I think we can go Toxtricity. And Trick Room did end last turn. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that like, I, I figured that, that out. I was like, am I going crazy? So, yeah. So we have... Does he have Parish Song on him? So, yeah. So Grimmsnarl has Parish Song. Grimmsnarl is going down. We don't even have to focus on Grimmsnarl at all, actually. So we can... Uh, just want to hit something, yeah, we'll, we'll just Dragon Claw, something that has a uh, highest chance to land. And we will Overdrive. For game here. So, oh, Max Guard, nice play. Try to Light Screen, Light Screen is going to fail. So the, uh, the Max Guard is actually a good uh, play on our opponent. Because it means the uh, Dragapult is going to go down. But it also means that Grimmsnarl is going to go down because he doesn't have a switch in for it. And he's taking sand and burn damage. So this Conkeldur is not feeling too good. A Dragapult goes down, but that's fine. He put on some, some great pressure there. Grimmsnarl is out of the way, so we don't have to worry about any more screens. Light screen actually wore off as well. So, so that hit that we did against the Grimmsnarl, that was with the light screen up. Let's just keep that in mind. And in comes Inteleon. So we have the speed control in. We are hitting for special damage. So we're fine here. I'm just going to do something that's guaranteed to land with the Ice Beam. And we're going to go ahead and click Overdrive. One has to uh, click the Max Guard here if he wants any chance to try to prolong this game. So I'm liking the role that Indeedy played there. Now obviously that slot, when I was building the team, uh, that slot was uh, potentially going to be for a Steel type or a Togekiss or you know Flying Fairy, which is basically going to be Togekiss because Flying is, is always good to have something that can take like a, a earthquake attack because people are going to be trying to earthquake uh, our Toxtricity. But I don't know. What Ndidi can bring to the table, I feel like, is just very uh, underrated right now. Stopping prankster abilities that target this side of the field, so fake tears, taunts, shutting those down while also being able to do follow me and helping hand. I think is uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty impactful. So um, that switch in to the the sucker punch attempt, I think, was actually really huge. So nice. So so far, the team's looking pretty good. We have our, our third game here. We'll see if we can continue this uh, good streak here. Okay, we also see some... This is like a very, very, very meta uh, team here. This is like all the meta. If you can grab as much meta, pack it into one container, a ball. This would be one big, massive ball of meta. So they have Durant. So we're going to have to start Dragapult because that Dragapult's the only thing that we have that can counter Durant. Um, and he's going to be faster, so... Uh, but if there's a Tailwind, then that's going to be a problem. So yeah, we're going to have to do Dragapult and DD because of the pressure that Durant can, can bring. We're going to have Inteleon. Uh, actually, Conkeller is going to be really good here because he can also pressure um, Duraludon. Toxtricity. What do you do here, Toxtricity? He has Sludge. He has the only thing that's super effective against Togekiss. Toxtricity is actually really good as well. Inteleon's going to be good against Duraldon, but I think that's the only thing it's good against. Oh, no. Actually, it's good against Incineroar. Okay. So I think we're going to leave Con Conkeldur out. We're going very special attack heavy. But yeah, Toxtricity is actually... Uh, he can hit Togekiss for super effective. And... Um, 
with electric or with poison. So I think uh, both of those things are something not to overlook. Obviously, these are special attacks, and Togekiss is bulkier on the special defense. So it's not quite the same as using a steel type from Durant. We see Lapras Togekiss here. So this is unfortunate. Opponent is, is going to be setting up uh, the screens here. And I think what we're going to go ahead and do... Hmm, I wonder if Togekiss protects or if it's going to... Yeah, Lapras with screens is definitely a huge problem. So we're going to go... He's going to get the screen up though for sure. We're going to go Lapras. Our opponent's probably going to do Follow Me. Or potentially Dazzling Gleam. We're going to go ahead and switch into Toxtricity. Being Poison type, we do resist the uh, Fairy attack some. So this way, Toxtricity will benefit from a speed boost. And then uh, hopefully we can live either the Dazzling Gleam hit or the Ice hit from, from Lapras. But uh, yeah, if our opponent does uh, Dazzling Gleam and uh, the Aurora Veil Ice move, I think uh, that's going to be uh, GG for uh, Dragapult. But ideally, uh, our opponent would do Follow Me and, and just let the... Uh, the uh, Lapras uh, set up for free, but uh, I'm not too certain that's going to happen. Fortunately, we didn't just straight up start with the Toxtricity. That would have been perfect here, but uh, I, I really wanted to have something for the potential Durant start. Because that start just would have been a real problem. So, our opponent had a better uh, lead here. We'll see if we can come back. And no uh, follow me, so that does mean that we are probably going to have to eat a Dazzling Gleam. And Dragapult's likely going to go down here. Yeah, here comes the Dazzling Gleam. Yeah, Dragapult takes a huge hit here. Weakness Policy procs, but I'm not sure it's going to matter uh, if Lapras is attacking into Dragapult, which I would imagine it would, being ice weak as we are. So yeah, we'll see that come down. Hopefully we can live. No, okay, we don't. If we lived there, then we would have been actually in a great, great, great position. Yeah, but there goes the uh, the Aurora Veil. We're going to be seeing a lot of this in the current meta, so we might have to consider putting in a Pokemon that has Brick Break or Psychic Fangs, because, uh, yeah, this is just going to be everywhere. I think we can go in Didi here. And we're just going to Helping Hand. And... Go ahead and click Overdrive, because they're both weak to Overdrive, so there's no point to do the Boom Burst here. And that's not going to be as impressive as it naturally would be because of Aurora Veil, but uh, I think this should still pack a punch. Wow! Down goes Togekiss. That's massive. Through Aurora Veil, so that's big. Lapras' weakness policy, so it's going to get a kill on something. I'd imagine it goes after Ndidi because of the Focus Sash. Oh, well, maybe not. I guess it's going after the Toxtricity because of the uh, Geyser. I thought it was going to do another Hail Attack and uh, try to take down Ndidi and then kill it with the, uh, like with the Hail Residual. But we did get Togus down. That was a massive hit. That was awesome. Question will will be is can we take care of this uh, Lapras before it does any more damage? Water is up, and we see Duraludon. Okay. Now there's no point for us to do follow me because the Duraludon is going to have the stalwart ability. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and double up into Lapras here. Let's see how much shots? Are we super effective? Ice Beam not very effective. So I think we do Hydro Pump. And just hope that uh, s the rain gives us enough uh, extra damage to get the kill here. And oh, fortunately it didn't land, so I think that might spell the end for us. And indeed, he takes that pretty pretty well, though. Here comes the energy ball. I'm not sure if hydro pump and energy ball would have gotten the kill anyways. So yep, we're seeing uh, the power of this Lapras. So okay. 
We might have to change the team. I know, I mean, it's one Pokemon, so you don't want to change your, your whole team for one Pokemon, but this Pokemon is going to be everywhere. I don't know if maybe Duck and Kelder turns into another fighting type that can carry Brick Break. Or maybe even a Dracofish that has Psychic Fang. So I think that's what we're going to have to do there. This is a GG, so we're going to go ahead and concede there. And uh, yeah, okay. I mean, so far, but the team, like, you saw that hit, though. <laughs> But that hit through the veil from Toxicity was massive with the helping hand. So that's I'm, I'm liking that. I, I'm thinking that's going to be something that we're going to do. We're going to have to address the Aurora Veil situation, though. That's for sure. Now, obviously, it's, it's a different story if we started with the uh, Dragapult and Toxicity from, the, from like the jump. Maybe next time, maybe we just do, do that and we don't worry about the Durant. And we just go, Lapras is a bigger threat. Um... But uh, yeah, our opponent kind of had everything that that he needed there. He had Durant, but we're faster than Durant with our Dragapult. But he also had Whimsicott, so we couldn't just let him set up Tailwind and do that. So we had to bring out Ndidi for the Follow Me. So it's just uh, just that was actually probably the perfect matchup to go against us. I still like our team. I think we're going to keep our team intact. Try to do another day's worth of work. And uh, if we still see that we aren't able to stop Aurora Veil, vale, then, then we'll, we'll address it. But as of now, I'm actually liking the way our team is set up. So uh, we're going to stop there. Let's check out where we ended up. I mean, yeah, it's probably not, not that great because we, we are just starting back down in the Tier 9. Let's see how far it drops us down. Hopefully not too far. Okay, yeah. So if we keep going 2-1, and 3-1, I think we're going to be in a good spot. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and end the episode there, and tomorrow come back with some uh, more uh, ladder content. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please comment down if you're liking the team or have any recommendations of what you want to see. And until next time, I've been Drake Adams.